Welcome back to another Audi video. Right, so I've had a little bit of a change of plan with this car. So in the last video, you'd have say, seen me say that I was just gonna kind of do the bare minimum, send it for an MOT. We're gonna kind of get it on the road and I was, you know, gonna treat it as a, a running into the ground kind of car. But if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time whatsoever, you'll know that I have a complete inability to hold myself to that and the main reason is is that i just form these ridiculous emotional attachments to the cars and now of course the car has a name I made the fatal error of actually naming the car like the, the wisest thing to do was it so in the last video i asked you a lot for suggestions thank you ever so much there were some cracking ones and we have now named the car claudia and so shout out to uh, Hannah for coming up with that name. You lot all voted, you voted for Claudia. I thought it was quite a clever name. You know, this, this heap of junk, it now has a personality. She has a name. So what this really means is that now I'm just gonna treat her <laughs> with love, respect, kindness, and tenderness. So I'm not gonna just do the bare minimum now to get her through an MOT. I'm actually gonna go way overboard like I'm, I'm good at. We're just going all out, bringing cars, saving cars from, you know, extinction. But basically, we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna bring her right back to life and I'm gonna use nice parts to do it uh, and everything should be hunky-dory. I just can't help myself. I have this really strange kind of notion. I mean, I'm sure there's people watching this that are exactly the same way. You buy an old project car and I know it's nothing special. It's just an, just an Audi A6 2.5 diesel. You know, it wasn't a special car to begin with, but I just can't see it not brought back to life. It's just this part of me that I just want to, I just want to back on the road singing again. You know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. This is not economically viable. So before we get into this today, I just really want to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Shipley. Now Shipley is a platform that connects you with transport providers all around the country. And it's what I personally use to ship all of these project cars around. Claudia here, she came to me via Shipley. And the reason that I love using Shipley so much is that it basically just saves me so much time and money. So instead of having to call up a load of transport providers on the phone and then trying to get the best price out of them, all you do on Shipley is you take about one minute to upload your job on the website. Shipley will then put your job out to all of these different providers. Those providers then all bid on your job, which means that you get the absolute best price possible. And then to top it off, all of these transport providers are feedback rated, so you just know straight off the bat who you can trust. So if you've got a car or any other large item really that you wanna ship, head on over to shipley.com. So I've actually got a special guest today. This is uh, actually my sister, Bian Hello. Bianca. I've actually got three sisters. Bianca's, you, what are you, the middle, middle sister? By far my least favorite sister. <laughs> Easily, hands down, my least favorite sister. I do have favorites, it's not her. And then the other thing you need to know about Bianca is that she has the biggest head out of any mammal. <laughs> right, and the reason that Bianca's here, so Bianca actually works for one of the large motor factors that you all would have heard of. Am I allowed to say the name of who you work No, it's not. Odd. Should they be getting free advertising? So she works there as a parts advisor. So she has come down from Kettering to Essex today because basically she just wants me to kind of take her around the car and show her what's what. She deals with all these parts all day long. She wants to know like exactly what an EGR valve is, exactly what an intake manifold is, you know. To be fair to her, you know, as few brain cells as she's got, she's uh, <laughs> she's actually very interested in cars. So I'm just gonna kind of show her around a bit today. So this is a V6. So you understand, you know what a V engine looks like, right? The concept of a V. No right down the middle of the car yeah. to drive the rear yeah. wheels. But it's not due down to how the car performs, it's just how the basically positioning and how the car looks. It's to do with the layout of the drive train. So if it's 500, you can have next to each other more than... Slave cylinder, slave mass cylinder. cylinder. So the, slave, the, the master cylinder goes underneath the pedal, which then attaches to the slave cylinder. Is that the turbo hose? That's the turbo hose, yeah. It goes into the radiator. That's the turbo. God, why are you sweating so much? Because it's hot. <laughs> I've done anything. She's, I haven't done she's anything. standing there. <laughs> I've done a lot. I'm not sweating. I'm exhausted. Yeah, I know, but you're a freak. <laughs> it's recording. What are you recording? There's a screen on the back. Oh. 
<laughs> I'm holding it around like that. Let's rust it on and round it up. Rusty spoons. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. All right, so that was nice actually having her here. We really got into it. Delved into the old textbooks as well for quite a while. That all actually lasted about, I don't know, about four hours, five hours, <laughs> uh, which is a bit mad, but it also means I've not got anything done. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna change these glow plugs. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there's just down here, there's just all of the old like engine cover crud and, gunk and like everything in there is just is, is everything's built up all around the glow plugs and so i'm gonna have to remove like all of this stuff because i don't want that to fall down the glow plug hole so i'm gonna like clean out all in there all in there and then we have to get these glow plugs out and i want to soak them in penetrant actually overnight first and i know you've got to heat up the engine and do all of that so you don't snap them so that'll be fun. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this injector. I mean, I know I don't technically need to do it, but you know, we're putting some love into her. So I am gonna do that. So all of this is gonna have to come off as well. I've also, there's also, like, there's, there's a leak, something down there is leaking. I'm not sure if that's the rocker cover gasket or the manifold is leaking. So I'm actually gonna strip the manifold off as well. And I've got a replacement gasket for there. I'm gonna strip this manifold off because I need to get to the EGR valve underneath. And so I'm gonna take the EGR valve out and this pipe, which means I can then get down the side of the fuel pump uh, in order to replace the seal that's down there. I'm gonna replace the EGR valve. I've got a new one, it wasn't very expensive, so that's quite good. Uh, and that will sort out the fact that that's not holding vacuum. I'm gonna replace the fuel filter. I'm gonna replace the air filter. We're gonna replace that Mingin cabin filter, pollen filter. I'm gonna do an oil change. I'm gonna replace the oil filter. I'm gonna to have to see to this sticking caliper on this side. Basically, I've got a lot to be getting on with right now. Okay, so it's actually a few days later now. I've had a lot on. Right, so I'm just warming the engine up. And when I turned it on, I mean, you might have saw in the last video, I, I turned the engine on at one point, and I was like, well, what was that noise? That was weird. And then didn't, didn't think anything of it again, didn't hear anything. But now I've just started it up one more time. And let me, I'm just gonna blip the throttle and, and just see if you can hear this. It's, it's quite worrying. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. There. It's like a big clicking noise. When you get to about 2000 RPM. Oh, what's that? I mean, I'll put you in the engine bay and see if you can hear it. Oh, what is that? Oh, that is nasty sounding. Now, obviously I'm by myself, so I can't quite hear where it's coming from but it does sound as if it's coming from down there somewhere I mean that's all I can tell you I don't know if it's at the bottom I can't get anyone to to rev it while I stick my head here but that sounds very mechanical it sounds very metal on metal oh you see I don't even know what's down there because it's quite a big engine in this car that sits right forward so there's you know there's absolutely no gap there I don't know what that could be but I think this car might have more problems than I initially thought which is the absolute last thing that I wanted I thought it was just going to be a couple of couple of bits like we saw with the with the math oh god this always happens doesn't it that's what you get isn't it though when you buy a 500 pound car on eBay and uh, the description just says used. You see, here's what's coming into my head straight away that is worrying me is that these engines, so this is the AKE engine code. So 2002, these engines are known for uh, basically destroying their cams or some kind of oil issue, I think. I don't know if it's that. Um, I don't know if it's that. It'd take a hell of a lot of working out for me to 
get down there and oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, so what I've done, I've just removed the oil cap and I just turned over the engine just so I can kind of get one of the camshaft lobes in the right position. And this is very difficult for me to show you because as soon as I move the camera above the thing, it goes dark, it blocks the light out. But I can see down there the camshafts and just from the little bit I can see, I can see one of the lobes there, it looks worn. I mean, basically the, the like the rockers in there can disintegrate, they can explode. People have found stuff in the oil pan. I just knew there was gonna be something else with this car. It would have been way too good to be true, wouldn't it? Just to have fitted a new math sensor and then the whole car would have just come back to life and everything was fine and dandy. Okay, so now I've pulled the intake manifold off. Just a couple of things straight away. You can see in there the carbon buildup is really quite something that's uh i mean that's, i don't think that's ever been cleaned out and you can see it there that's the inlet into the intake manifold that's in the top of the manifold that's bad i mean i'll just get in there with the screwdriver look <laughs> look at that same in here look you can just peel it off like that, wow. All right, so I think I'm gonna to have to pull that apart at some point, I'll have to clean all of this out. I think I'm gonna probably do, do the timing belt as well because whilst I have got a service history that was far, that finished in 2016, there's no evidence in there that the timing belt has ever been done. And so this car is now 20 years old and it's got 125,000 miles. You might think I'm mad, but I think I'm just gonna get fully into it. <laughs> I'm secretly over the moon that I'm having to do this, by the way. I love this work. I love this line of work so much. You've seen my previous videos, you know these problems aren't really problems, they're just opportunities for me to learn more and to get more involved. Also, can we just take a second to appreciate these gloves? These are called Muckoff Mechanics gloves. This pair, I started wearing this pair at the beginning of the Fiat 500 job. So I've taken an engine out, put an engine back in, done loads of other suspension work with one pair of gloves, this same one. These things are absolutely incredible. I can't recommend these things highly enough. You know, the thin vinyl gloves, they just, they just break immediately because what the problem is when you're working at home and you're constantly pushing yourself up off of a tarmac, really rough tarmac floor or block paving, they just split instantly. They're not very good. They're great if you're in a garage and you can just put your car up on a lift. But when you're constantly going down and you're pushing yourself up, down, put, they rip in a second. Then if you get something like a marigold or one of those green gardening gloves, they're thicker than this by quite a lot. And, you know, your dexterity is really compromised. It's like just getting little bolts off like that, you know, you're fine, you can't feel the bolts. It's a bit of a nightmare. These are right in between, you know, the, the vinyl gloves and one of the, a set of those green gardening gloves that you know about. They're perfect, they're absolutely, but they're so hard wearing. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get them. You can, you can get them on Amazon, so highly, highly recommend. Okay, unbolt the expansion tank, disconnect the electrical connector for coolant. Hang on, before I do anything, let's just take some photos. And the retaining clips on injector pipes. Where are they? I don't know what that means. Well, if this isn't one of the fiddliest jobs I've done in my entire life, I don't know what is. Oh, we've got diesel going everywhere. Brilliant. The rocker cover is off. And I'm not 100% sure what a worn cam definitely <laughs> kind of looks like. So you can obviously see on these cams there where the rockers will have been running. And I mean, is that normal? Is that within normal kind of range of where? So you can see it here on this one that there's some really deep pitting on the actual lobe itself. I mean, I can get the screwdriver in there and look, I'm actually pushed that into the hole. So that doesn't look good. And there's pitting 
on this one as well over here. I mean, I can't see any big kind of chunks of metal in there or anything like that. So it doesn't look like the cams have failed. Everything, at least just, just when I prod around, feels tight. So I've taken the oil filter out. There's no metal in it or anything like that. I've had a look in there. I've shoved a, a magnet down into the oil, oil filter housing there. And I suppose as well that I could look, How the hell have I got oil all over my face like that? <laughs> I look like a coal miner. <laughs> I don't know how I've managed it. Uh, yeah, I mean, what I haven't done is I haven't dropped the oil pan off, but I do still need to get to the bottom of that horrible clunking noise. So whilst I can't see anything by eye going on there, I think I probably still need to take this front clip off just to have a look at exactly what it is that's going on down there now. I managed to take the front bumper off, as you can clearly see, but it took me about an hour because all of the bolts and all of the nuts, everything is just rusted to death. You know, I'm, I'm having to fight all of the rust. I mean, you can probably see it all falling off on the floor from the wings. Same round here, there's a pile of just rust that was all falling in my face and everything under there is dying. Look, these are what all the clips look like. And there's there's a broken off broken off bolt there. That wasn't me, that was that was just in there. Okay, it is a new day and it's supposed to be 40 degrees today, which I think would make it uh, the hottest on record in the UK which is interesting. So I put out a post on YouTube the other day asking people if these camshafts look excessively worn. And the general consensus was they're a little bit worn, but nothing really to be worried about. Like you'd, you'd really know if they were worn too much. A couple of people said they were too worn, but however, someone did comment on my last video this morning to say that the noise that you could hear from this engine. So that, that very noise, because you could hear it in the first video as well, is actually one of the rocker arms in the cylinder head. Um, they had a car that made that exact noise and it was, it, was a, it was one of the rocker arms. I have taken a look at how much replacement camshafts for this cost. And you're looking at about 300 pounds just for one bank, because it's a V6, right? I know I'm always harping on about, oh, it's not economically viable. It doesn't, there's a limit. <laughs> <laughs> there is a limit and I think that might be it. Also have a think while you're sitting here watching this, what else could this noise be? So someone someone seems pretty sure that it's broken valve train, you know, rocker arms or camshaft. But could it be, Jesus, what was that? It's like a flying dinosaur. Um, or could it be an engine mount? I mean, it is right down there. Could it be the engine mount when I'm revving the engine? Because I've got a, I do have a code, don't forget, on the computer for a broken engine mount. These things are like electro hydraulic or something. Maybe it's that, or maybe there's just, or maybe it's the power steering pump or some pump down there. I'm not sure, but I think I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to take these cams out. Yeah, it's quite warm actually. So what I've um, what I've actually done now is I've actually taken off the rocker cover on the driver's side as well. I'm trying to just like I just wanted to compare the two sides just to see what's going on with camshaft wear, just seeing if there's anything obvious in this one that's broken, any like of the rocker fingers or the rocker arms. And I'll be completely honest with you on here. The camshaft wear looks pretty much exactly the same as the other side. It I mean, it doesn't look too bad. There's no, you know, there's no like ridges that you can actually feel, you know, with your finger or your nail. That all looks to be good. And I can't obviously see any broken bits of metal or any rocker fingers in there that are broken. Now I did go away and have a look at how you take these out and you do need, um, you do need a timing kit basically to, to lock, lock the crankshaft, lock the engine in place. Uh, and a, you need a, a pulley remover to take these sprockets off. It's really quite an involved job just to remove the camshafts. Right, so it's day, I don't even know what day it is. What day is it? 
It's not even anywhere near. I'm just talking to myself. Great. X number of days on, I still don't have the cans <laughs> out and I've just come across, uh, a, well, let's say, a stumbling block. So in order to take the camshafts out of here so that I can inspect the rocker fingers, I have to take off this, uh, this fan clutch assembly. You have to take off, there's an engine cover in there, the injection pump belt which runs off of this cam sprocket and then if you look behind there there's another cam sprocket with another belt and that's the like the V poly V groove poly belt belt poly belt thing and that goes you know that actually drives the camshafts and uh, so I've got to take all of this stuff off, all, loads of gubbins down there, there's tensioners and there's idler pulleys, all stuff down there just so I can take this sprocket off so I can get the camshaft out. That's all I'm trying to do here. But where I've just come completely unstuck is actually just being able to remove this fan assembly. So what you're supposed to do is just get two big 32 mil spanners and then you just undo it, right? Apart from the fact that this nut is just seized on there so it's, it's got no business being seized on quite as much as it has. So obviously all I've managed to do is round the back nut. So there's a nut on the back that actually is part of the bearing. Um, that I've managed to round because what I couldn't do is get a load of heat in here because I would have just damaged the bearings that were in there. So I didn't want to get any heat in there. These big whopping great 32 mil spanners haven't done anything and then I thought oh, if I just get a cheater bar attach it to this and then give it hell that might do something but obviously that's not going to do anything seeing as that's just rounded anyway that would have just expedited the process you know I've tried hammering it and just try and loosen it off it's been soaking in penetrant for days you know I keep reapplying it and it's not coming off so I think I'm at the point now basically where I'm gonna have to get in here and just cut it and I don't even know how I'm gonna cut that off because I can't get a grinder down there. I'm gonna to have to go old school and get a hacksaw. And before anyone says anything, I know you've seen me previously with a little junior hacksaw going I won't be doing that. It always just seems to be that the absolute smallest little things keep bogging me down you know there's all these little bits now and that's why this video is so late getting out to you because I've got stuff coming from Germany and that's taking more than a week to turn up and <sighs> I don't feel like I can catch a break at the minute so I've just decided that if I'm going to end up cutting this off and I've already looked and you can buy second hand ones and a new bear and everything I may as well just try heating it up now to within in an inch of its life No, I can't do that because now I'm going to melt the plastic cover, aren't I? Ah. Okay, can I get a grinder down there? Absolutely not. <sighs> Crying out loud. Come on, one, one last go before I give up with it. No, oh, it's already slipping. <sighs> oh, I go dizzy doing that. So I realise this is a somewhat anticlimactic end <laughs> to a video, but I need to get something to cut this, cut this fan off properly. The bolts on the fan are now rounded, so there's nothing I can do, even, even if I've got a breaker bar. It needs to be cut off, so I need a new bearing. I'm gonna need a new vicious fan. Vicious, viscous, what do you say, viscous fan? I'm gonna need a new fan. Uh, so, it's more money, more effort, more pain. <laughs> um, and let me know what you think about these cams and the rocker fingers and what you think is causing that noise. As ever, I'm going through hell here, so if you could do me a favour and hit subscribe, that would, uh, that would help me out a lot. And also give me a follow on Instagram. This right here on the screen is my Instagram account, go over there. And I suppose I will see you in the next one.